uh, over 25 towns and cities uh, across the UK. Uh, there's, there's a northern leg uh, and there's a southern leg. Uh, and the, the idea is to try and promote this uh, notion of one million uh, climate jobs. Uh, there are booklets at, at the back which say a little bit more about it. One million climate jobs is quite a catchy title. But we believe that it's actually more than that, that it's potentially a sound solution as well. We, we feel it's, it's, it helps as part of the solution to both the current economic crisis and the current environmental crisis. Um, and as I say, it's more than just a title. If you look at this uh, booklet, you'll see that the person, the people who have written it, uh, a bit different Jonathan Neal, who was the main author of it, had actually worked out that a million climate jobs can be created. Uh, for example, if there was real investment in public transport, you could get over 300,000 jobs created. If there was real investment in renewables, you could get over 400,000 jobs created. And these would be new jobs. These are not jobs transferred from another industry. And you put them together with the jobs and things like uh, uh, insulation of homes, and you can get one million climate jobs. You probably could get more than a million, but uh, we stuck with a million because it is actually quite a, a, a nice, uh, catchy title. So we're saying there's if we were to have that sort of investment, we could have a partial answer and a very hopeful answer to both the uh, economic and the environmental crisis. But one of the features of the book is that we are saying we expect government to take the lead in creating these jobs. We don't think it's enough just to rely on the private sector that they may or may not create these jobs. It's not to say that the private sector doesn't have any role, but our worry about simply giving, for example, fiscal incentives to the private industry is that they may create some jobs, they may not, but they'll probably get nowhere close to a million kind of jobs. So our feeling is that government needs to take the lead. And we're suggesting in the book that the government takes the lead through something called the National Climate Service. In many ways, the, the message of this book, the message of the caravan tour, <coughs> is the very opposite of the austerity that we're seeing right now. I believe the austerity is both inequitable and actually the austerity policies are not working. Because I think if we are to get out of the current uh, economic crisis, we've got to start with jobs. Somebody said, if you invest in jobs, everything else will take care of itself. Now that may be a little bit too simplistic, but you can see what was meant. If you invest in jobs, if people are back at work, earning money, paying taxes, spending <coughs> money in the local and national economy, then you've got money circulating in the economy. Then you begin to get growth, which will take us <coughs> out of recession. So that's why the starting point here is jobs. But, and there's an important but here in this booklet, we're not saying any old growth. We're saying climate growth. In the past, when uh, national governments, regional and local authorities wanted growth, the traditional way of growing was, for example, to build a, a, a new road, a new motorway. Chris and I, many years ago, were involved in opposing the Birmingham Northern Relief Road. That was seen as a way of growing, of generating uh, income, of creating jobs. These days people look to invest in expanded airports or new runways as a way of creating jobs. Now clearly those things will create jobs and they'll bring some sort of uh, 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 an 
they'll, they'll bring some sort of return on the money. They'll bring some sort of growth. But, in our view, they are, that sort of growth these days, in the long term, is self-defeating because it's making climate change worse rather than improving the situation. And that's why we're arguing quite strongly that the growth we should be looking for is growth, is climate-friendly growth, is growth in jobs which uh, are climate jobs, such as the examples I gave, renewable energy, public transport, home insulation. We believe that's a way forward that uh, can help get us out of both the environmental and the economic crisis uh, that we're in. And just two more things. As we've been going around the country, what has been interesting is the way that people have been responding to us, and in some ways, particularly young people who maybe have come out of school or come out of university and can't get a job, and say, yes, there is some hope here. And that's one of the reasons why the caravan is actually going around the country to try to dramatise uh, in places all over the UK that there is another way forward. There is a hopeful way forward which can bring jobs, particularly to young people, and can bring growth that enhances the environment rather than damages it. And finally, while it's a message of hope, we also think it's a fundamental message that challenges the current uh, way government is doing things. The current government is emphasizing austerity. It's emphasizing, uh, it, it talks climate and is doing one or two things in that direction, but it tends to think that climate can take a back seat while we deal with the deficit. The challenge of this book is that there is a different way forward. That politically and socially, there is a different way forward which could help solve both the environmental